Welcome to Scarecrow Labs. The fuel for my uh, electrolyzer is a dilute mixture of distilled water and potassium hydroxide, also known as KOH. Uh, please note in the foreground the rubber gloves. Uh, although the mix I use is, is fairly weak, uh, I use about uh, four tablespoons in a, in a gallon of distilled water, uh, it can still cause some minor chemical burns, and, and if you're using a really strong batch, uh, frankly, this stuff will peel your skin right off. So, uh, yeah, rubber gloves are a real good idea. This is a still shot of my setup, all ready to go for a day of experimentation. Uh, in the foreground there on the blue tub is my uh, variac and metering system. That's basically how I control the amount of voltage headed to my electrolyzer. The electrolyzer is the big white square thing. And of course, uh, sitting up on the bench, uh, the, the two black towers, that's my uh, reservoir and my um, uh, bubbler setup. Uh, but for this video, I'd like you to pay particular attention. In the foreground on the left, you'll notice there's a one-gallon milk jug sitting on the ground with a tube going into it. Uh, that's my fluid recovery system. Uh, at the end of a day's experimentation, there's uh, no good reason to throw away perfectly good electrolyte solution. Uh, I sometimes use the same electrolyte for a couple of months. This is a little closer shot of my fluid recovery setup. Uh, you'll notice that there's a valve on the end of the uh, uh, inlet tube. And what I do is, uh, when I'm done experimenting for the day, I go ahead and open that valve, drain off any fluid to that level. Uh, then I tip the device over on its side and allow any additional fluid to drain out into the, uh, into the one gallon jug. Uh, typically the capacity on my system is right about a gallon to a gallon and a half. Uh, so I do have a couple of those jugs around to recover all my fluid so I can use it again the next time I want to experiment. Well, I'll tell you, I sometimes take a little ribbing about the fairly primitive method I use for measuring output from my device, but i tell you, it's, it's kind of handy when you're working with these things to have yourself a bucket of water handy. If you should happen to take a, a, some exposure to the chemicals used uh, in these experiments, uh, you'll find that a, uh, your, your best friend could be a, a five-gallon bucket of water nearby. Uh, so, you know, you might want to think about it. It's, uh, it. I think it's a good idea. Now, this is a still shot of my uh, reservoir and bubbler setup. Uh, the one thing I want you to take a quick look at is sitting on top the uh, the bubbler, the device on the right, uh, there's a little white tower sticking up. That is the niftiest little flash port that the guys over at uh, EBN put together for me. Uh, just between you and me, it kind of saved that video I did where I was running the generator on HHO. Uh, but this particular video is about uh, chemical handling, safety precautions. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, that little gem deserves a video of its own. So we'll pick that up another time. 